person or joining online, just a, a privilege and honor to be able to worship together this morning. Just want to bring your attention to, even though this is the fourth Sunday, we will be doing pennies from heaven today. We'll have that offering as a part of our service. Um, and also want to bring your attention that we will be using both hymnals today. The last uh, song that we will sing today will be from the United Methodist hymnal, and all the other ones will be from the New Century hymnal today. Also just want to encourage you to participate in today's worship service in whatever way is most meaningful for you. If you would like to participate out loud, um, I invite you and encourage you to do that. Or today, if you are wanting to just absorb and silently reflect and, and listen, I invite you to settle in and do that as well. Whatever way is most meaningful for you today. As we settle into our time of worship together this morning, I invite you to call to mind where over this past week or the last few weeks, where you have experienced God in a personal way, where God has shown up in a way that has encouraged you, has given you comfort, has filled you with joy, and reminded you that God knows exactly where you are and what you're needing each moment of your life. I invite you to take a moment to do that silently, and then I'll bring the microphones around if you would like to share out loud. Is there anyone who would like to share out loud this morning? And so together, let us thank God for the ways that God showed up with us throughout this past week in personal ways. And together let us say, thanks be to God. As we enter into the rest of our service this morning, let us listen to the ringing of our bell as we declare to those around us and to each other the joy that we have and the gratitude we have for all that God has done for us and has promised to continue to do. gather this morning to worship the Good Shepherd, the one who knows each of us by name, who restores our souls, who leads us in the way of righteousness, and whose goodness and love never stop pursuing us. Come, let us worship God together now. So I now invite you to stand in body or in spirit. And we will sing the song of praise. It's number 22 in your New Century hymnal. Sing praise to God who has shaped.
prayer. Holy One, our guide and protector, throughout this hour we ask that you open our minds and souls and hearts so that we can hear the gentle direction of your spirit in our lives. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Please remain standing and we will now join together in the prayer, prayer song, Spirit of the Living God, in New Century Hymnal, number 283, and we'll sing this twice.
us pray. We thank you, God, for this opportunity to share our blessings with others and to improve the livelihood of those all over the world. Amen. I invite you now to listen to this morning's scripture reading, or you may read along. It's in the back of your bulletin. It's Psalm 23, and it's adapted from today's English version Bible. God, you are my shepherd. I have everything I need. You let me rest in fields of green grass and lead me to quiet pools of fresh water. You give me new strength. You guide me in the right paths as you have promised. Even after I go through the deepest darkness, I will not be afraid. God, for you are with me. Your shepherd's rod and staff protect me. You prepare a banquet for me where all my enemies can see me. You welcome me as an honored guest and fill my cup to the brim. I know that your goodness and love will be with me all my life, and your house will be my home as long as I live. May God bless our understanding of these words. I invite you to bow your heads for prayer. <clears throat> oh God, as we Spend time with this familiar psalm. I ask that you speak through me this morning so that it is your words that we hear and so that we can learn what it is that you desire for us to apply to our own lives. And then we ask that you help us to do that. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. When I was about 18 or 19 years old, I came home from school one day, it was college, and I came home, my family lived on three acres, kind of up on a hill, and we used to have it in apple orchard, um, this is in Michigan, and my neighbor had several sheep. And so once our orchard was no longer there, the, the sheep would, we opened up the, the uh, fencing in between and the sheep would come and just graze in that area. And so this, on this particular day when I came home, um, my sister was there with me and another very good friend. And as we got there, we saw this really amazing thing taking place. I don't know if you've ever had that opportunity to watch what sheep dogs do. As they go in and they, they help to herd the sheep and they kind of will get them going a certain direction. So we watched as this, this dog was doing this out in, in the um, pasture area, we'll just call it a pasture, where the sheep were at. And it was just like circling in and it was getting in really close until we realized that this dog was not trying to herd them together. He was trying to isolate out the most vulnerable and the most weakest sheep to attack it. It was not a sheep dog. It was from two miles down the road, it was a big husky that had somehow gotten away from its owner, gotten through the fencing, and was attacking the sheep. What I didn't know at that point, when I dropped my things on the ground and ran screaming, into that area, in the fenced-in area, and luckily the dog ran away. What I didn't know at that point is that it had already killed at least five sheep. He was going after the vulnerable and the weak just because and was bloodthirsty. The Bible describes that as Jesus went about all the cities and villages 
teaching in the synagogues and proclaiming the good news of God's kingdom, curing the diseases and every sickness. Jesus saw the crowds and had compassion for them because he saw that they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Leaving no doubt about his understanding of his role on this earth, the Bible also records that on one occasion, as Jesus was speaking with the religious leaders, he proclaimed to all those present that he, Jesus, is the Good Shepherd. A claim that Jesus embodied everywhere he went. To better understand what Jesus had in mind when he described himself as our Good Shepherd, it is helpful to have an awareness of the magnitude of what was required of a shepherd in that region at that time. We tend to look through our lens here where sheep are in a fenced-in area of some sort, even when rogue dogs or wild animals can get through. They're still fenced in, typically. Oftentimes, there's even livestock guarding dogs or some other kind that provides protection. We, we have a different view of what that might mean. So it helps us to look at the context in which Jesus was living. And to help us do that, we can draw on the familiar imagery provided in today's scripture reading, the 23rd Psalm. And today we'll just look at some of the applications. We could spend a very long time looking at all the beautiful nuances and understanding of how Jesus is our Good Shepherd. By just looking at nature, but we'll just look at a few of those today. Bible scholars believe that as David wrote this psalm, that he couldn't help but have his own experience as a shepherd in mind as he reflected on God being the shepherd in his own life. In order to properly care for their sheep on any given day, a shepherd must be aware and fully invested in the needs of the flock as a whole, as well as being in tune with the unique characteristics and needs of every single sheep. In the writing of the 23rd Psalm, David poignantly describes the individual care he received from his divine shepherd. In his book, A Shepherd's Look at Psalm 23, Philip Keller describes the nature of sheep this way. They are creatures of habit that will follow a path through a desolate place and ignore excellent forage, even though it's not far away. They'll just stay on that familiar course. They are given to listless wandering, and at times they can be frightened by silly things, and yet at other times they cannot even be moved. From birth, however, sheep have a strong instinct to follow other sheep. That's what will get them moving. Unfortunately, sometimes this will end up in them following the lead sheep over a cliff. They are vulnerable and dependent. 
They have intellect on their own individual, but in the flock becomes a different story. And as a result, the life of a shepherd was and is still challenging, marked by constant vigilance, movement, exposure to the elements from both ends of the spectrum, the extremes of heat and cold, as they would move their flocks from pasture to pasture, which would require that the shepherd have a deep knowledge of the land and its seasons. As you hear descriptions to this morning, different things might come to mind for you, how that applies in your own life and, and Jesus' awareness for you. And for others, something else might resonate. Pay attention to those. Draw on the comfort of those. Because again, today we will only lift up a few of those things that apply. Bible historians describe that a typical day for a shepherd would begin with the shepherd calling to and gathering his sheep from the fold. A, a safe, enclosed location where typically several flocks would have been kept together overnight. What's really amazing and meaningful is that the sheep would recognize their own shepherd's voice. And all the other ones would ignore whichever shepherd was not their own. And in following them, the sheep would, or in hearing and recognizing that voice, the sheep would then follow um, the shepherd out into the day. As our good shepherd, Jesus taught that he enters through the doorway of the sheepfold, calling for each of us by name. Jesus said, my sheep listen to my voice, I know them, and they follow me. The shepherd would then lead his sheep out to graze. And even today, shepherds in that region generally do not drive their sheep in front of them. Rather, they take the lead and go before their flocks, setting the pace according to the terrain and the condition of their sheep. Drawing on the image of a shepherd who guides the sheep, Pastor C.W. Slumming writes that in the case of the divine good shepherd, although God knows the best path for our lives, God will never drive you against your will. God never forces you to do things that you do not wish to do. But if we permit, the Divine Shepherd desires to lead us along the paths that will meet all of our needs and will bring us to joy and renewal. And just as David confidently declared in the 23rd Psalm, the Divine Shepherd's goodness and love will be with us every day of our life. The context that David and Jesus had in mind tended to be unlike this, dry and rocky ground. With just a little grass here and there for the sheep to eat, which meant that sheep had to be moved constantly from one spot to another throughout the day. And with no fences to contain them, over the course of the day, the sheep would spread out to graze and rest. And because it is impossible to make sheep lie down while they are hungry, at least according to somebody, I suppose you could try, but it's nearly impossible. 
a reference to sheep lying down in green pastures, as is described in the 23rd Psalm, is a picture of contentment and satisfaction. Similarly, in that region, due to the heat and dryness of the climate, sheep required water at least once a day. And those familiar with that setting note that this presents a challenge since water sources are scarce in most parts of that region. That meant that the shepherd had to walk the sheep to and from the water source each day. Avoiding going the same route so that a certain area of grass didn't get trampled down. So having the bigger picture in view. And because sheep tend to be afraid of drinking water that is moving quickly or stirred up in some way, the shepherd had to know or find locations where there were quiet pools of water, or to access wells where water could be drawn up and then poured out into a stone basin or rock basin for the sheep to drink from. And in Psalm 23, the phrase still waters literally means waters of rest. Waters that provide refreshment and well-being. Something that Jesus offers when he said, Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. On another occasion, while sitting beside a well, a well where Jacob watered his own flock of sheep. Jesus described himself as the source of living water and compared himself to the water that is drawn from the well, saying, everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again, but those who drink of the water that I will give will never be thirsty. The water that I will give will become in them a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. That is the kind of water that is available through the divine Good Shepherd. But in addition to providing food and water, a part of Psalm 23 that many of us are very familiar with is that part that talks about going, walking through the valley of the shadow of death. And that's translated in many different ways. Another responsibility of this shepherd was to be willing to protect and defend their flock of sheep from wild animals and robbers. And if necessary, a good shepherd would even put themselves in harm's way in order to save their sheep from danger. Bible historians and archaeologists believe that the valley of the shadow of death in Psalm 23 refers to an actual valley in Israel called the Wadi Quilt. And this specific valley is described this way. It is a narrow valley running between Jerusalem and Jericho with a four and a half mile stretch of canyon with walls some 1,500 feet high and passage only 10 to 12 feet wide in the bottom of the canyon. And according to Bible historians, in Bible times there were bears, lions, hyena, and robbers waiting in the shadows and caves to ambush a shepherd and their flock. It is no wonder that it was considered a treacherous, dark valley of perpetual shadows and danger. It was in these moments, Pastor Bob Deffenbaugh notes, that the shepherd no longer 
stayed out in front leading, but would move back to come alongside the flock with rod and staff at the ready to protect them. But even then, because sheep frighten easily, even when a shepherd was able to drive away dangerous predators, a flock would often scatter and they would have to be gathered back in by the shepherd, often from various nooks and crannies. And as a result, the shepherd would spend hours, if necessary, traversing the wilderness or mountainside in search of any missing sheep. And then after hours of searching, the shepherd would carry the exhausted sheep back to join the rest of the flock never satisfied until finding even just one sheep. In the evening, the shepherd would double check and make sure there is a new location for evening where they would sleep sometimes at an impromptu type of a fold if they are still out in the wilderness would do a final check, counting as they would, would go into the fold. And it is said that a shepherd could just even look at the flock and tell if one was missing. He was so, or she was so aware of their flock. Could tell if even just one, that it, there was a different perception in the, in the group of, of the, the appearance of the flock. And so the shepherd would then go looking for the missing sheep. And once all were accounted for and safely in the fold, the shepherd would sleep across the threshold of, of the fold if necessary. Did you know that it doesn't come naturally for sheep to rest in the care of a shepherd? We see so many pictures holding the lamb or holding a sheep and they're just, they seem content. That doesn't come naturally for a sheep. In fact, it is a long learning process for a sheep. It takes time for them to learn the voice of their shepherd and to trust in him or her. In our own lives, this is why spending regular time with Jesus is vital. So that we can recognize and trust the voice of our Good Shepherd to lead us and help us throughout life. Jesus declares that He is our Good Shepherd, our guide, our provider, our constant companion and protector. And he is our Savior. And ultimately, as the Good Shepherd, Jesus demonstrated his supreme devotion by laying down his life for all. Whatever you might thirst or hunger for today, or whatever valley you might be journeying through right now, I don't know what path is right for you, or at what pace you should go at. And I don't know what will restore your soul, or what will bring you rest. But I do know and have experienced that Jesus, our Good Shepherd, has the answers and longs to satisfy and meet all of your needs. As we continue ever forward through life, may we find assurance in knowing that our tender shepherd knows each of us by name and knows our individual needs. And when we have gotten off track from where he has been leading us, our divine shepherd promises to never stop looking for us. 
And what happens then is best described utilizing a parable told by Jesus. And these are his words. Arriving back home, the shepherd called together friends and neighbors and jubilantly cried out to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep, which was lost. Thanks be to God for a divine good shepherd who cares about what is happening in each of our lives and has promised to lead us on the paths that will bring renewal and joy, who knows our individual needs and will lead us. invite you to stand now in body or in spirit as we sing together verses 1 through 4 from the new century hymnal number 489 I heard the voice of Jesus say
all of the, the team that's a part of that, and we say thanks be to God. And then just also that we ask for God's blessing on that as we serve our community throughout the month of October. Anybody else this morning a joy or concern? Well, it was a great joy to uh, join the Ukiah Symphony, playing with the Ukiah Symphony and our two wonderful soloists. We played a little Beethoven, Mozart, and Schubert, Schumann. And um, anyway, it was just a great joy to, to experience that. And I think a couple of you were there. And, we have another concert this afternoon, so I'm looking forward to that. Wonderful, and for that we say thanks be to God. Yeah, uh, like to share a lot of joy. Um, we are now legally permanent residents of this great country. <laughs> After 12 years of being here. So grateful to God and uh, to this community. When we came in, we were the one responses. Uh, I think you, Florence, maybe you know. Uh, Love One was a free sponsor, and Gary was my sponsor. So they have, uh, actually helped us uh, to work with. Um, our children came in later after we came, and uh, we joined the military. They became citizens two years back. So they were able to to apply so that we can change our status. Uh, I got my green card in May and we were waiting to tell you guys and tell you people. Uh, but two years uh, it was waiting for us and we just came last Wednesday. So told him about one that uh, we are now officially permanent residents of the Kingpass. So that's the joy I want to share. So after 12 years, uh, we've already, before we got uh, a green card, we made our uh, bookings return right up to our small island in Fiji. So we made our booking and we just pray and by faith, we both got our green card. So we'll be going in December Great. to enjoy with our, our family, our children, and grandchildren who are still in Fiji. Uh, that's one, and the other one is yesterday um, we had a large uh, family gathering. All our, uh, our relatives from Sacramento, down from Petaluma, uh, everywhere. We had a church service yesterday and it coincided with my birthday. Some left after their dinner, some left late last night, some are still sleeping at home, <laughs> and some will be going tomorrow. <laughs> so after this we are going to have another big lunch with them before Sunday. So that's a good I want to, we want to share. We always want to thank the Lord for his uh, blessings. Divine Shepherd, you know and have heard the joys and concerns that we have shared, and we entrust all of those to you, including those that we pause just now to silently share.
shepherding God, come close to us now. Be with us in the midst of any needs that we have. Help us to hear you rejoice with us in times of celebration. Guide us with your voice and help us to listen and follow no matter where your voice leads. Help us to trust you. Renew us. Guide us with your love. And renew us with your peace. We pray all this in the name of Jesus, the Good Shepherd, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you to stand now in body or in spirit for our closing song. And this will be from the United Methodist Hymnal, number 128. He leadeth me, O blessed thought.
worship with you this morning. I just want to invite you to come across the parking lot and join us for our fellowship time with coffee hour. Following that will be our council meeting today. Next Sunday will be a Taizé service, so I just want to remind you of that, and we'll be here at 10 o'clock. And um, we close our service now with a blessing first for our offering, and then for the week ahead. God of love, you abide with us. You provide for all our needs and guide us in the ways that you know are best for our lives. Out of gratitude for your care, we bring our gifts before you. Bless them and multiply them. Now may God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Amen.